Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater Soundcheck. This time out, a versatile bundle of mastering plugins from Fab Filter. Let's get started. Today we're checking out the mastering bundle from Fab Filter, which consists of four plugins. We have Pro Q3, which is a dynamic equalizer, Pro MB, which is a multiband compressor, Pro C2, which is a very capable compressor plugin, and Pro L2, which is a brick wall limiting plugin. The combination of those four gives you incredible power for processing your overall mixes, but you can also use them on the individual tracks. Now, what I like about these plugins is not only do they sound great, but they are just feature laden. They can handle pretty much anything you want to throw at them. Let's check them out. Let's begin with Pro Q3. Now, Pro Q3 is a dynamic equalizer. This means that we can use it not only as a regular equalizer where we're boosting and cutting in various different bands, but we can also have it react to the incoming signal and apply equalization depending on the level of that signal. We'll check that out in just a second. From a mastering standpoint, Pro Q3 is incredibly capable. It offers a wide range of different band types, and we can put those to use to either subtly or surgically process our mixes. Adding a band is very simple. We just double click. And the interface pops right up so we can see what's happening with that particular band. Now, depending on the type of band that we have installed, we have different controls that are available to us. For example, here we're in a traditional bell. So if we pull that up, we can see that we've got frequency, gain, and Q, which is our bandwidth. We can also choose to process in a variety of different formats. We can process just the left channel of a stereo signal, just the right channel, the complete stereo signal, or we can operate in a mid-side format and EQ just the middle or just the sides. For mastering, this is very powerful because we can really reach in and work on either the individual channels or the overall stereo mix. It also supports up to 7.2 surround, so if you're working in a surround format, you have those capabilities in Pro-Q3 as well. As I mentioned, we have a wide range of different shapes for our different frequency bands. And those are selected over here. Our traditional bell shape, we can have a low shelf for working on the low frequencies. We can also access a low cut or a high pass filter. Now, the nice thing about this is that we have an incredible range of slopes to choose from. So we can choose from a very gentle 6 dB all the way up to 96 dB or brick wall. This lets us get very surgical with our low frequency filtering. We also have similar high shelf and high cut, again, with that wide range of slopes to choose from. We can choose a notch filter for removing offending frequencies within a mix. We can also choose a band pass band, which eliminates the high and the low frequencies and keeps what's in the middle. And of course, we can set how wide that band is using Q, and we can also set the slope. Our last two bands are very interesting from a mastering standpoint. We have tilt shelf. Now this simultaneously adjusts the highs and the lows as you increase and decrease. So if you want to turn up the low end and bring down the high end, you can do that simultaneously here. Tilt allows us a more straight line process, but again, we have very clean control over the highs and the lows. This is great if you want to add some brightness while taking away a little bit of the bottom end or bringing up some of the bottom end while turning down and warming up the top end a bit. For mastering, or for mixing for that matter, one of the most powerful features of Pro-Q3 is that it can function as a dynamic EQ. This means that it responds to a threshold, an incoming frequency at a particular level will trigger the EQ band and either turn down the EQ or turn it up. So if you have a signal, for example, if you have a voice where you have a harsh frequency that's poking out, you can set this up so that it responds to that frequency. When that frequency is too loud and is making things harsh, the EQ will automatically bring it down. This allows you to very easily smooth out and warm up mixes, or to add brightness to a mix that has certain dark spots within it. We do that by simply adding a band. In the center, we have our gain control for this filter, but around the outside, we have a ring that shows us the dynamic range. If we pull that to one side, we open up this display, which allows us to set the threshold. The threshold sets the audio level at which that frequency band will start processing the incoming signal. Now we can set that up for auto operation, or we can manually set the threshold, and we can also choose to have it operate in response to a side chain. The nice thing about dynamic EQ is it allows you to, for example, crank up the high end to make things brighter, but to have that high end be responsive to incoming signals, so if you get a really loud cymbal crash with a lot of high frequency content, it'll bring that level down and smooth things out. You don't have those really harsh peaks that come through. The dynamic processing is very powerful for mastering, also very powerful when you're EQing individual tracks or buses. One of the great features of all of the FabFilter plugins is their metering. Not only can we see the overall level here on the right hand side of the plugin, we can also see a histogram that shows us what's happening with the frequency response, and in this case, we can also see our threshold here.
A couple of other nice features, we're over here in the output section of the plugin. If we hover, we can see that we can turn the metering on and off. We can also add an auto gain setting. This allows the plugin to maintain an even gain level, not jump up and down in level as you're changing the EQ bands. We can also invert the polarity. Finally, we have a gain scale control here. Now I think of this as sort of an intensity control. As you turn that up, we're adding to the level of EQ that's being applied. And when you bring that down, you're diminishing the amount of EQ. If you automate that control, you can bring in more EQ for certain passages and less EQ for passages that don't require it. Very versatile. We also can choose to operate in zero latency if we're using this live. And when we're mixing, we can choose natural phase, which would be a little bit more of an analog style EQ response, and linear phase, which is gonna be a very clean digital type EQ. We can also choose what our analyzer is displaying. We can independently choose the pre or the post signal, the side chain, and the bass as well. Our second plugin is ProMB, which is a multiband compressor. Now ProMB offers many features just like ProQ3 does, but what it is is basically a compressor that allows you to split the frequency bands. With many multiband compressors, you have a crossover point between each band, and you're limited by where you can place those. In this case, we can have six totally independent bands. They don't need to be adjacent to one another. So we could add a band here. We could also choose to add a band here. There's no crossover between them. Now, if we want this to operate more like a traditional multiband compressor, we can drag the two bands adjacent to one another, and it'll automatically set up a crossover for us. We can remove that by clicking here, and we have two independent bands again. Now, the nice thing is that we can access the low frequency setting, the high frequency setting, as well as our center point, and we have independent controls over every aspect of each band, threshold, range, attack, release, and output. We have independent look ahead for each band, an independent knee setting for each band, as well as an independent ratio. And we can choose either to compress or expand. This makes for a very versatile multiband compressor. So we could, for example, be compressing just the low frequencies while not affecting anything else. For mastering, this allows us to create a nice even frequency response throughout an entire song or across an entire album of songs. With the ProMB compressor, we have a wide variety of different compressor types we can also apply to the independent bands. Everything from very aggressive compression, expanding, gating, transient enhancers, to more prominent type settings, to very subtle settings. And we can scroll down here, and you can save your settings as well. If you want to dig even deeper into the parameters, click the Expert menu, and it'll open up here. We can work with a side chain, or we can choose to link or unlink the two sides of a stereo signal. So they can be processed independently, or if we push over here farther to the right, we get into mid-side processing. As with Pro-Q3, under our output section, we have a mix control, which I think of again as an intensity control for the overall effect of the compressor. Once again, we can choose what we're looking at with the analyzer. We can turn look ahead on and off globally. We can oversample up to four times, which allows us to reduce the effects of aliasing. And we also have three different phase settings, dynamic phase, linear phase, or minimum phase. And as with Pro-Q3, we have a histogram and metering that show us exactly what's happening with the signal. As with Pro-Q3, Pro-MB features extensive metering as well. We have the stereo metering over here, but we also have the histogram that operates in the background so you can see exactly what's happening with the different frequency ranges you're processing. Our next plugin in the mastering bundle is Pro-C2. Now this is a single band compressor, but it offers a wide variety of features and it also has some great user interface enhancements. The display for Pro-C2 is divided into two sections. This is our knee over here, and over here is where we'll actually see the audio that we're processing. Now we can change the knee by affecting the threshold, or by actually changing the knee setting from a very hard setting to a very gentle setting. We also have a control for the range of the compressor. Now this allows us to set the maximum amount that the compressor will push down the signal. And this is great if you're working with voiceovers. You won't use it so much when you're mastering. We have several different operational styles for the compressor. Mastering is, of course, the one that we'll use when we're doing mastering, but you can choose from bus compression, punchier compression. If you're working with drums, you might want more pumping. We have a dedicated vocal style, and so on. And those do really affect the response of the compressor, so you can choose the one that's gonna be best for the signal that you're working on. Of course, we have traditional attack and release settings. We have an output control. 
And we can set that to auto gain. And in this case, as we're making changes to the parameters in the compressor, it'll keep the output level constant. And so we can really hear what's happening as we're compressing the signal. We're not getting volume changes that are interfering with what we're hearing. Pro C2 can be used as a parallel compressor. Again, you might use this a little more when you're tracking or when you're mixing on, for example, your bass or your drums, but it's also very useful when you're mastering because you can allow some of the dry signal to get through while mixing the compressed signal back in with that. An unusual feature in Pro C2 is the hold control, which is found here in the user interface. Hold controls are more common with noise gates where they're used to keep the gate open for a certain period of time. In this case, what we're doing is delaying the onset of the release stage of the compressor operation. It's basically keeping the compressor pushing down the signal. This allows for smoother operation if you're processing room mics, or you're trying to prevent pumping, or you're trying to maintain a more even response between the attack control and the release control. Pro C2 has very powerful sidechain capabilities, and we access those here. We can audition the sidechain, we can listen to an internal signal or an external channel, we can also choose the side chain level, and we can work with either a stereo linked pair of signals, or we can work mid side. But perhaps the most powerful feature of the side chain inside Pro C2 are the three bands of EQ we have available. We have a low cut filter, we engage that by turning it on here, and we can choose the slope for that from 6 dB up to a brick wall 96 dB. We also have a high cut filter, again, with that same range of slopes, 6 dB to a very steep 96 dB. But an interesting band is the center parametric EQ band here. We can use this manually where we go in and set the parameters for gain, frequency, and bandwidth. But an interesting use for it is in auto mode. In this mode, that center filter will respond automatically to what's happening with the low cut and high cut filters. So as we move those in, we'll see the peaks start to increase. And this is going to enhance what's happening with that bandpass side chain and really emphasize those frequencies so we can make the compressor more sensitive to that particular frequency band. In this case, for example, we might dial this in at a higher frequency, use it for de-essing. Or if we've got a boomy frequency range in the bass, we can control that using this dynamic response from the side chain as well. As with Pro-Q3 and Pro-MB, we have global setting for look ahead on and off. We can oversample up to four times to reduce aliasing problems. And in our output section, we can independently affect the output level, the input level, and our mix control, again, is sort of what I think of as an intensity control, overall changing the effects of the compressor, either making them stronger or less strong, and again, we can automate that to suit different sections of our song. Our final plugin, Pro-L2, is one that's going to be very important for mastering applications, because it's a brick wall limiter with a lot of advanced features. So if we open up that user interface, we can see the familiar fab filter user interface. Just from this basic view of the user interface, we have several important functions that are available to us. One of those is new, and that's true peak limiting. This allows Pro L2 to catch inner sample peaks. We can turn oversampling on and off, and in this case, we can oversample up to 32 times. Now, this moves aliasing effects way out of the audible range, but it is very CPU intensive, so you can tune the oversampling to your computer and the audio that you're working on. We can also bring dither in and out, and there are various types available. In our output section, we can turn on one-to-one. -one. What this does is turn down the output by one dB. For every dB, we increase the input gain. So if we run our signal in, we can add an incredible amount of gain on the input without affecting our output level. And this really lets us hear what's happening with the limiter. We can really hear whether it's squashing our peaks or adding any distortion. When you're finished with all your setup, you can turn one to one off and then work with your output volume level as usual. In the output section, we also have DC offset removal. We have side chain listen. An interesting feature of the output section allows us just to hear the difference signal or just the actual peaks that are being limited by Pro L2. So if we turn that on, we only hear what the limiter is doing. There are several different ways we can meter signal inside Pro L2. First of all, we can look at true peaks by turning on TP here, but we also have several different ways we can look at the histogram. In the traditional way, we see the histogram scroll by and we see the effects of the limiting. There are several different speeds we can look at this. We can look at this, for example, in a slow speed, but an interesting one is the infinite metering. If we turn that on, basically we get a history of what's happening. By the time we've played through the whole song or a whole album, we see exactly what's happening with our levels throughout. We also have several different ways we can set up level metering. By clicking here, we can set target level ranges 
So we can look at loudness, for example, and we can choose several different ranges there, and also whether we're looking at short-term, momentary, or integrated displays. We can set our levels to, for example, minus 9 LUFS for CD, minus 14 for streaming, or you can set a custom level. And this allows you to target what's happening in your limiter to exactly match the levels that you want to deliver for those different formats. This gives us a lot of information inside this single screen. Fortunately, we can resize the display to see exactly what we want. So we can choose to look at a compact where we remove the different graphic displays and just look at the metering. We have different sizes of the graphic displays, small, medium, and we can also go to a full screen display. In addition to loudness metering, where we're showing our targets over here, we can also choose different resolutions for our output metering. 16 dB, which allows us to really zero in on the peaks. 32, 48, different K styles of metering. And again, we can jump back to our loudness metering. If you want to really dig in deep to what's happening with your limiting, you can access the advanced menu here. Here we can choose a variety of different styles of limiting, and these change the response of the limiter very audibly, so it depends on the type of signal you're working in, which is going to be best for you. Modern will be fairly aggressive, but also very clean. We have transparent, punchy, all-around bus limiting, which allows us to basically work on individual buses and then sum those all together into a brick wall limited final mix. And also safe, which is going to be very transparent. The focus here is on maintaining zero distortion in our limiting. So it's great if you're mastering orchestral passages or if you're working on acoustic music. We have a look ahead control, attack, release controls, and then channel linking. One of the things that makes Pro L2 so powerful is something we haven't talked about, which is what happens under the hood. We actually have two completely separate limiters operating simultaneously. One is more aggressive, and it's working on the transients to control those peaks. The other is operating almost more like a leveler and working on the release portion of the signal. So between the two of those, you can really get in and dial in the exact response you want. And we have control of that here in the advanced panel with the transient and the release. You can balance the two of those however you like. I hope you've enjoyed this whirlwind tour of the four plugins in the FabFilter Mastering Bundle. There's so much depth to these plugins, so much capability, yet they're so easy to use, so easy to dial in, whether you're mixing, working on individual signals, tracking, or in this case, mastering. The complement of these four plugins will allow you to do exactly what you want for controlling your dynamics, setting your levels, and shaping your frequency response. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher.